Hi everyone and welcome to the MariaDB Dev Room at FOSDEM. My name is Robert and I'm a server developer at the MariaDB Foundation. My talk today is basically a follow-up for my uh, MariaDB Jupyter kernel presentation that I gave during uh, the MariaDB Fest conference. Uh, you'll see here the main features in action, installation demos, and we will chat about the internals of the kernel. Uh, I'm happy to announce that our first beta release is out. Uh, it took a bit more than, ex than expected, but among other work in the foundation, we managed to keep a steady pace, and here we are. Uh, this release contains all the, feature we, all the features we intended to have initially, and probably all the bugs we did not as well. Uh, but no worries, that's how all projects start. And also, we added some more features that seem natural to develop along the way. Uh, after the MariaDB Fest talk, we got our first community contributions, and that was an amazing feeling. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Seth Shelnut from TileDB, who contributed several bug fixes and uh, also automatic versioning based on setup tools, uh, Mike Waterman for a code formatting patch, uh, and Jeremy from shop.com, who gave me excellent feedback and described his planned use cases thoroughly. Uh, I'm really grateful. Thank you for this. In terms of the main features we have in this release, uh, MariaDB Notebook behaves exactly like a normal MariaDB command line client with minor glitches here and there. Uh, we added magic commands that create different type, types of charts uh, for the data of the last query, LS magic that acts as a list of available magics uh, and uh, also some usage information. Uh, we also provided the ability to pass a JSON configuration file uh, to tweak some behaviors of the kernel, automatic dete detection of a running server, and the ability to start one if none is detected. Uh, and the last but not least, we added data frame-like rendering for tabular results. Let me show you some demos to see practically how to play around with the kernel. To install the kernel, you need to run pip install MariaDB kernel, like this. Installing, pip is getting all the dependencies required. And it's done. Uh, now we need to make the MariaDB kernel, kernel visible to JupyterLab. And we do this by running the install script like this. Yep, the kernel spec is installed. Uh, as you can see here, I already have JupyterLab installed on my computer. Here it is. Let's open it. Some logs here and switching to the browser window. This is the main interface of JupyterLab and here you have the MariaDB kernel. Uh, if you go on the small circle uh, from the right, you can see kernel idling and typing a testing command, it works. And next, we will talk uh, about uh, running some, some live commands in a notebook. If you suffer from cold fingers like I do during live demos, the notebooks are a great tool to help you cope with this. Uh, you can still give the impressions to, to, the, to the users that you didn't fake the results, uh, but you also don't have to type live uh, because you already have everything filled up. So let me walk you through this, uh, through this example notebook. Uh, we have a, uh, a data set, a table called committers that contains uh, all the commits that happened in the MariaDB server repository between 2009 and 2019. Uh, and this, this table contains, uh, uh, for each commit, a timestamp, uh, the name of the author, the organization email, uh, how many files the user changed, how many uh, lines uh, the author added, and how many lines uh, the author deleted. Uh, so we want to perform some, some uh, queries and some, some analytics on, on this table. So here are the columns. We can execute 
the statement to get the, the table columns. And if we want to compute the top 10 individual committers for this time frame, uh, this is a markdown cell. If you execute it, it will be displayed nicely like this. Uh, so to compute the top 10 individual committers, uh, we select the name. Uh, we group by uh, the name of the author. Uh, and we count the total commits in each group. We sum the, the total of uh, files changed and the number of lines added and the number of lines deleted. And we order the results by the number of total lines deleted, let's say. I'm not sure what the, what's a good metric here, but let's say, for example, this one. And we limit the, the results set by 10. And we get a nice table where we see the top top 10 committers. As you can see, the, the, the table is formatted like a, a, a Pandas data frame. And the conclusion here is that Monty didn't work enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, as you can see, I performed the select, another markdown element. And then we can check out what the kernel can offer in terms of magic commands. And we do this by using the lsmagic command. And as you can see here, it is, uh, it is listed all the, all the magic commands of type line and all the magic commands of type cell, which is none. Uh, we have some ideas there, but uh, uh, it's soon to follow. So we have line, bar, pi, df, and LS Magic. Uh, you also have some help and some guidelines on the right to, to help you get started. And let's assume you we, uh, we ran the LS Magic command. Okay. So let's assume you want to see the proportion, the proportion of total commits for the top 10 contributors we, we computed above. Uh, because the kernel stores the result of the last select, the magic command uh, command here pi operates on that result set. And by using the total commits uh, column as the y axis and the index uh, the name column, uh, we also disable some, some stuff for styling. We get this nice pi chart that displays the pr proportion of the of the total commits for this this data set uh, now we have another uh, another data set and this one is obtained by by uh, uh, crawling the the information from the mariadb server repository from github uh, using the the graphql api and we have it in mariadb it's basically a table that has a bunch of rows, like uh, for each row which represents a pull request, you have the state of the pull request of the event, which is merged, an ID, the title of the pull request, the URL, uh, when it was created, uh, last updated, when it was closed, if it was closed, a bunch of labels in JSON, the pull request number, uh, uh, if it was merged by whom, the author of the pull request, uh, and some other stuff like all the comments and, and, and things like that. Uh, so this is the format of the data set. Uh, to see who created the most most pull request, uh, also uh, I forgot to add that this data set is, is also computed for the time period between 2009 and 2019. Uh, so to see the most uh, uh, prolific uh, pull request creators, we did something similar to the to the other example, uh, and that is select from the data set the author uh, and account uh, for for each group by the author, uh, account uh, for the number of elements in in each group. Also, we we order uh, the result by the by the number of PRs the author created. 
and we limit the result by 10 and we get this. Uh, we can see here Daniel Black is in the top, uh, Kevin, Alexei, uh, Ian and, and so on. And uh, let me execute this. Got the results, another markdown for description. And now uh, I want to compute another metric which is uh, uh, which is something I, I invented. Uh, it is called the contributor frustration metric. Basically, uh, this this uh, query will will tell you uh, what are the number of pull requests uh, that are still open for for each for each uh, individual. Uh, and this kind of uh, uh, makes me think that uh, the greater the number, uh, kind of the the greater the fr frustration for the contributor because it, uh, the contributor has many, many pull requests that are not being merged. Uh, so if we run this query, we can see a top five, for instance, of people and their their number of pull requests. Uh, the data, the, the results that is ordered by the uh, pull requests still in, in, the, in the open state. Uh, so you can see here in the top again, uh, Daniel Black, uh, Alexei Anel, and so on. Uh, good to, to display this in a in a in a chart using uh, one of our magic commands. We can run the uh, par magic command with the x-axis the author column and the y-axis uh, the PR still open column. Also some uh, options for styling so that the, the chart is displayed nicely. If we execute it, you can see uh, the the bar chart resulted. Uh, the, the kernel uh, behind the scenes uses uh, matplotlib to generate this type of charts. Uh, they are not the best uh, looking uh, in, in my opinion or Maybe I, I don't know how to configure the library, library properly to, to uh, make them look more modern. Uh, but for uh, such use cases where you want to, to use some fancy libraries for displaying modern looking charts, you can export your uh, data set in Python uh, with this magic command. Uh, and now the the, 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 la the last select was written in a CSV file and you can go in Python, in a Python notebook and you can import this data set and uh, I don't know, use, use a library like Alter to, to generate modern looking charts. Uh, I have a Python uh, notebook opened here. Uh, all you have to do after you exported the data set is you need to import pandas, you need to read the CSV file and if you uh, print it, you'll see that the data set is here. You can also go and, I don't know, do another, run another select, let's say the one initially here. Uh, and we have this. We run another one, df data set set2.csv. We execute this one, we go in the Python notebook and we do df2 csv. Yep, it's the cold fingers. Data set two that csv. And if we execute this one, uh, you get uh, the data set here. So that's pretty much it. Uh, next, we will see another demo in which we uh, try to, to exemplify how you can run MariaDB with just one click, which is a nice feature that, that the, kernel, the kernel brings. It is possible to run SQL against the MariaDB server with just one click. Uh, it was extremely simple to integrate uh, the MariaDB kernel with the uh, mybinder.org platform, and you can try it either by clicking this link in the uh, documentation page on knowledge base or you can click on the try it out badge on the 
kernel github repository. Let's click on this. As you can see, my binder opened and it tries to transform the kernel repository into a running notebook. Uh, the execution for me here is mostly cached, so it is a bit faster. Uh, the first time you will try it, it will take a bit longer till the notebook is, uh, is opened. And here it is. Uh, this is an example notebook I, I wrote to, to get you familiar with the ma main kernel features. Uh, you can execute, for instance, the version statement. And it is updated, or you can change it to, I don't know, any other query. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so, it's possible to run MariaDB uh, with just one click. Uh, next time you, you are debating your friends over a, over a weird SQL statement, you can quickly try it from, from your phone, for instance. Uh, that's all I have in terms of demos for this session. Let's next dive a bit uh, deeper into how the kernel works internally. This is how the kernel fits inside the Jupyter Notebook ecosystem. In the top part of the diagram, you have your browser with the Jupyter Lab or Notebook web application. When you execute a, a cell in the notebook, the web app sends a message to the server side of the notebook, uh, and that contains a, a spell of the code uh, you wrote in the notebook. Uh, and when the message hits the notebook server, it is pre-processed and immediately forward, forwarded to, do, to the already spinning MariaDB kernel. Behind the scenes, the kernel implements the Jupyter client protocol to deal with all sorts of messages like execute, uh, shutdown, autocomplete code, and so on. Uh, please note that the kernel is able to connect to any MariaDB server as long as it is reachable from the outside, uh, be it local, remote, on your own infrastructure, or in the cloud. Uh, this is a question one of our users uh, had when he wanted to try the project. Uh, getting into a bit more details, here is the overall architecture of the MariaDB kernel. Uh, the orange color represents the kernel core part. The blue side represents the communication side with the MariaDB database, and the green side represents the parsing and the magic handling logic. Uh, when you start a new notebook, the Jupyter code spins up the MariaDB kernel, and during the startup phase, the kernel creates a client config object that parses the JSON configuration file. Then it passes this object to a new, newly created MariaDB object. Uh, the MariaDB client object then tries to connect to the server given the credentials from the config. And if it can't connect, it lets the kernel know. And then the kernel spins up a MariaDB server instance. Uh, and this one is abstracted under the MariaDB server class that you can see here. And this is the startup phase. Uh, when, the when, the, when the user executes a cell in the notebook, the kernel receives the message containing the code of the cell. Uh, when this message is received, the kernel creates a code, code parser object uh, and passes this code to it. Uh, the code parser object then does three, three, three things. Uh, one, it parses the, the code and finds the SQL code and the magic commands in there. Uh, the second, for each magic command that it found, it uses the magic factory class to create the exact magic object that is responsible for the logic of that magic command. Uh, and third, it returns back to the kernel the SQL code that it found in the cell and the list with all the newly constructed magic objects. When the kernel receives this information, it walks over each magic magic object and calls its dot execute method uh, and after that all the magics are dealt with. The kernel then gets the SQL code from the parser, it sends it via the MariaDB client class to the MariaDB server and waits for a, a, a result back. When the, when the SQL result is ready, the kernel sends it back to Jupyter. As it is shown in the diagram, we designed this kernel so that the magic logic is as independent as possible, so that people can, can easily come and contribute their own magic to the project uh, without, tremendous, uh, without a tr tremendous amount of effort or knowledge of the entire kernel. <clears throat> and as you've seen in the demonstration, the project is packaged for PyPI, and it takes very little time to set it up. You can find more installation tips uh, in the kernel documentation on knowledge base. And that's pretty much all I had to say. 
I hope you enjoyed this small intro into the MariaDB Jupyter kernel and thanks a lot uh, for taking the time to watch this presentation.